Henselt is a composer who is very, very, very close to my heart and a composer I've performed um, quite frequently and most especially last year when I performed his piano concerto in the composer's birth town of Schwabach, um, which is near Nuremberg in Germany. Henselt is one of the most important pianist composers of the 19th century and during his lifetime was indeed mentioned in the same breath as Chopin and Liszt. Um, for a variety of reasons, his music seems to have fallen from grace in, in more recent times, and it's one of my life missions to do something about that. Aside from the sheer beauty of his music, um, one reason perhaps why he's not so frequently performed is because of his music's extreme difficulty. And when Henselt is difficult, he doesn't say thank you very much for the effort in the same way that Liszt, for example, does. Quite often, um, the difficulties of his music would only be understood by another pianist. So, um, for those of us who have um, a great deal of vanity, he's probably not the best composer to be performing, because often his difficulties are completely inaudible. He was tremendously influential and I think that the impact that he had, because he moved to Russia, he's been described I think rightly as the founder of the Russian piano school, as he, you know, um, had a, wielded a tremendous influence on all of the Russian piano teachers and piano composers that came after him in that country. Um, his influence can't really be overestimated. Indeed he was the teacher of Rachmaninoff's teacher and there are certain traits that seem to have been handed down. Um, a preoccupation with richness of tone rather than brilliance of tone, if you like. There is a very clear progression um, which shows him as being the transition between the music of Chopin and the music of Scriabin. Um, this is significant because Scriabin actually performed um, the Henselt Piano Concerto to graduate from the Moscow Conservatoire. So if we hear um, a few bars from a Chopin etude, You can hear then that from this style of piano writing it's not such a huge leap to this from um, Enschwindenes Gluck by Henselt. And you can hear again that it's no great leap from this style of piano writing to this um, fragment from Scriabin's second sonata, the Sonata Fantasy. In this way, you can see that Henselt started to free up some of the ideas that Chopin had had and thus paved the way to modernity in modern piano writing, which is basically what Scriabin did a generation later. There was a very, very interesting endeavour, a collection of 20 piano etudes written by various composers, and this is referred to as, um, and was published as, the method of methods of Moscheles and Fetti. Moscheles composed two of the studies in this collection himself and invited all of the luminaries of the piano world at that time to come up with one, two or three contributions. So thus we have the Trois Nouvelles Etudes by Chopin, we have the first version of Abirato by Liszt, um, there's the F minor Etude by Mendelssohn, and um, various rather beautiful, I have to say, studies by composers who have been forgotten today, like um, Amade Merleau, um, Rosenhain, for example, and one tiny little piece by Henselt, um, La Gondola. So each of these composers have been invited to compose a piece of music that um, highlighted what they considered to be an important aspect of piano technique. This tells us a great deal about um, Henselt's own attitude toward piano playing because despite the fact that his music has always been known for its extreme difficulty, what he prizes above all else in this piece is balance of touch and beauty of tone. <laughs> 